It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview Mark McMillan, the head baseball coach at Charleston Southern. How are you doing today? Doing well, Brandon. Appreciate you having me. Can you talk about your Can you talk about your coaching experience so far? Well, uh, it's a lot of connecting the dots, really. Um, you know, I was fortunate uh, to have an opportunity back in really 1996, believe it or not. So I'm I'm aging myself, Brandon. Okay, but 1996. I uh, actually started off as a middle school coach. How about that? A um, few years later, uh, was uh, given the opportunity to coach uh, the varsity baseball team at my high school alma mater. So I did that for approximately eight years. Uh, after uh, my time there, uh, I was brought on as an associate scout for the Seattle Mariners, which led to uh, an opportunity at Crichton College. So I became the head coach at Crichton College in Memphis, Tennessee, an NAIA institution. Uh, after being there for about four months, uh, the economy was not doing very well. Uh, the university uh, or the college had to do away with athletics at the end of the year. So uh, we got to May and I was looking for a job again. And um, through my affiliation, uh, with the Mariners and the particular scout that I was working with named Alvin Rittman, uh, we uh, uh, were able to connect with uh, Carlos James. And Carlos James uh, was the head coach at the University of Arkansas Monticello. And so uh, Carlos needed a graduate assistant. So um, spoke with him. Just one of those things like, you know, you could tell this was going to work. You know, we just hit it, uh, you know, we just hit it immediately. And uh, he brought me on board, gave me a lot of uh, uh, duties and responsibilities from recruiting to overseeing pitching and infielders. He left uh, the next year to go to the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff, a Division One institution in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. I did apply and interviewed for the head coaching position at Monticello, didn't get it. And then thankfully, Carlos brought me on board at UAPB as his associate head coach and recruiting coordinator, uh, as well as overseeing pitching. And was there for, uh, I think, four or five years. And then uh, the opportunity came available to uh, seek the chance to become the director of baseball operations at Ole Miss. And it was just a good time in my life uh, for it to come about. I was very fortunate uh, to, to get the position and um, had a terrific seven years there, loved it. I uh, had the chance to learn under one of the, what I think is one of the best coaches in college baseball, let alone in college sports. And then, uh, you know, just uh, gratefully, uh, you know, Jeff Barber, our AD here reached out to me asking if I'd be interested uh, in, you know, in this position here. And I was, and, uh, you know, here we are. Uh, now we're, you know, head coach of division one program. And so, uh, you know, that's about 20 years in the making, Brandon, right there. That's a long time. But, you know, you, when you connect the dots, you realize all those things allowed you to get where you are today. That's an amazing career. Thank you. Can you talk about your experience playing for Ole Miss? Sure. Uh, it was terrific. Um, you know, I uh, – coming out of high school, um, you know, I was, uh, I guess you could say, a multi-sport uh, student athlete, if that's, you know, if, that, if that's how you want to phrase it. Played football, uh, basketball, track, and baseball, and really the two sports that stood out the most were football and baseball. And, uh, you know, I wanted to play baseball. I loved it and played it since a young age. And, uh, you know, Don Kessinger met with me came to my house and it was one of those things where it just felt right. And uh, I had the opportunity to go to Ole Miss, you know, play in the best conference in the country, uh, made a lot of terrific uh, friends, had a great experience, especially in 1995, uh, having an opportunity to play in the Tallahassee Regional and in the championship game there. Uh, you know, and it's just one of those that I can look back on fondly because, uh, you know, uh, individually, 
which may sound selfish, you know, had a good tournament, but it was a great experience for all of us. You know, we'd been working hard to get a chance to go to Omaha, fell short, uh, but, you know, that's the, that's the season you can really look back on and go, man, that was a lot of fun. And then during my time there, I uh, met uh, a mentor of mine named Bill Moziello, who, uh, you know, Bill has, has been in this industry for a number of years and, you know, his influence on me today continues. Uh, but it was terrific. And, you know, and, uh, and to be able to go back and serve my alma mater, uh, you know, in an ops position, in a coaching position uh, was such a blessing. Speaking about that, can you talk about the ops position and the coaching position at Ole Miss? Sure. Uh, you know, the ops position uh, for me was uh, just a great transition. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's an opportunity to really learn how uh, a program runs uh, with all the different parts that make up this, this wonderful production that you may see on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, so to speak. And, and that's one thing I really wanted to be able to do was uh, to find out, you know, how do you do it? You know, how does, uh, how do you get marketing involved? How do you get ticketing involved? How do you go about this process of putting on this? And again, I call it production because, you know, you want, you want people in the stands and, uh, and knowing that, you know, we're not going to go 56 and 0. You know, it's just, it's really, really hard to do that. And so to do that and then uh, to learn under, uh, you know, uh, a coach like Mike Bianco, who uh, has a system that's been in place now for 20 years. And it's a consistent, it's a system of consistent success. It's been, uh, you know, emulated on a number of different programs now throughout the country. Uh, it was just a, a perfect opportunity for me. And then, you know, I was fortunate, um, Brandon, I, uh, you know, moved into a, a coaching role two years after, uh, you know, serving in the ops position. Uh, Stephen Head, one of the, the best players to ever come through Ole Miss, uh, was the uh, was a coach that left and, and took a, a scouting job with the Los Angeles Dodgers. And so, you know, thankfully, Mike uh, had confidence in me and asked me if it's something I'd like to do. I, I jumped on board because, you know, after a couple of years, I was, I was anxious to get back on the field. And, uh, you know, the volunteer position uh, at, at Ole Miss is one where you're given a lot of responsibility. And so, you know, I was uh, fortunate. He, you know, gave me the outfielders. He helped, uh, he enabled me to oversee the base running and then, you know, assist with hitting. And then kept me uh, responsible for, uh, you know, certain uh, entities such as our bullpen club, uh, which is something I enjoyed. And uh, so, again, just uh, to be on the field and have those experiences, to be around the players and build the relationships, uh, it was just all around good experience for me. How has that shaped you now to become the head coach at Charleston Southern? Well, it, it certainly, you know, my time there had a uh, significant influence on me. Uh, you know, they say that, uh, you know, the saying is, uh, I guess you become the average of the five people you're around the most. And, you know, I was, uh, during my time there, five out of the seven years, we were a staff that were, they were that we, you know, we were there consistently. And so uh, to learn from some of the best in the, in the industry, uh, certainly plays a huge role uh, to watch Mike, uh, you know, go about the daily communication with the players and, you know, the emphasis of the core values, uh, the explanation of the system uh, definitely played a role. And then, you know, others such as Carlos James and just his, uh, you know, his, his, his zest for life, uh, the, the, you know, the, uh, letting you know it's okay to come out to the field and smile and have fun. And then, you know, I take a, uh, an individual like Bill Mosiello, who uh, really, for me, uh, instilled this passion, you know, this, this, this absolute just love for the game. So, you know, those three individuals, uh, you know, they definitely have a place, uh, you know, in my heart, but they're, they definitely have a role in what we're trying to do here in this culture that we're, that we're creating. Can you talk about what you plan to achieve in your first year at Charleston Southern? Well, you know, I, uh, you're, you want to be humble, you know, that's for sure. Uh, you know, we don't want to put uh, too high expectations on our guys, but I think, uh, you know, we want them to know that we have uh, goals that we're trying to obtain. And, uh, you know, 
uh, our goals are, yeah, we'd like to win 40 games. You know, we, uh, we want to win the Big South Conference Championship. You know, we want to win a regional, a super regional. We want to go to Omaha and win a national championship. I think, uh, you know, all those things have reasons behind them. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're in a position to compete for a national championship, just like the approximate other 300 teams in the country in Division I can do. And so, you know, I would say more than anything, what we're trying to do right now, Brandon, is create a, a culture of positivity, uh, not only through uh, how our, our body language speaks, but also how we communicate with them on a daily basis, and then trying to uh, let them know that, hey, what we have in front of us, uh, it's doable, uh, but there's a willingness there that has to, to come into play uh, as well. And to do these things, you know, you got to learn how to be at your best every day. You got to learn how to embrace the adversity that comes with uh, not just baseball, but the daily things that we go through. You know, you're looking for uh, guys that, that know, you know, you want them to know that we believe we can succeed in any situation. And then, you know, they need to be selfless. They, they, they have to learn to put, you know, we over me. And so those are the things we're trying to instill. The, the things we want to do from on the field, I think, uh, you know, we, we've got to accomplish some other things off the field uh, to do that. Uh, but really just expressing to them, Brandon, that we just want to win today. We want to be at our best in everything that we do, you know, from the time we get up to whether it's brushing our teeth, going to class, you name it. Let's just be at our best. Can you talk about the recruitment process as the first year head coach at Charleston Southern and what you have to look at in the process of what players you need and what you don't need? Sure. This is uh, <laughs> it's been a little unique this year with COVID. Uh, you know, I uh, got hired uh, around the middle of May. Uh, the NCAA, uh, you know, was in a dead period. We're currently in a dead period, which means, you know, you, you just can't get out and go see, see the players. So, you know, for us, uh, you know, it was important, one, that a higher recruiting coordinator that, you know, wakes up in the morning thinking about recruiting and goes to bed at night thinking about recruiting. And, you know, I think uh, you could probably see that uh, in your previous uh, you know, podcast with Coach Izio, a guy that just has tremendous energy, uh, but, you know, also uh, is a relationship builder and great communicator. And so for us, it was, uh, you know, we had some aid available um, to go try to add additional student athletes to our program. So we did that. We did it through a lot of phone calls. You do it through probably more video today, certainly than you would before. Uh, because you can't get out and actually see them. So, I mean, you know, it's one of those cases where if you get a video, you, you're going to stop and look at it, you know, and then um, reaching out, vetting as best you can to make sure that, you know, you're adding the type of individual that you would like to be a part of your program. Uh, you know, the what do we want to do? Um, it's a great question. I think, you know, we, we want to be a program that um, – is known for development. And so, you know, I want players to come in and feel like, hey, when, you know, during your time here, you develop not only on the field, but off the field. And so we'll identify how we recruit or who we recruit, you know, really based on, you know, just the needs. And so, um, you know, we've got a mixture right now of, of high school and junior college guys, uh, not only coming in or that are here now, but, uh, you know, uh, committed for, uh, 22 and 23 and and that's the way we'll go you know for us we're gonna have to be uh, really good on the phone you know we got to let them see that this is who we are you know we're a coaching staff of uh, made up of you know four coaches three of which of us have uh, you know three-year-olds or younger and uh, you know we're here to, to do this together and at a place that uh, you know uh, we believe can be successful. Has the extra year of eligibility affected y'all? in the recruitment process, not having enough, like, for example, players that are coming back or that are coming back? We, we've been fortunate. Uh, you know, we, we did have players come back, uh, you know, due to COVID, which I'm grateful they have the opportunity to do it. We elected to not, uh, you know, decrease or let any players go. Um, you know, that just didn't want to be, I didn't want to be known as that guy. So, I mean, we're at 47 players right now on our roster. Uh, I, 
I guess in a normal year, uh, you know, that would probably seem a little high. Um, but you know, this isn't, uh, this, I guess might be the new normal here for a little bit, you know? And so, uh, has it impacted us, uh, negatively? No, uh, not at all. I mean, uh, you know, we were able to go do what we wanted to, and we feel like we'll be able to continue to pursue, uh, what we need to, uh, down the road. And so, uh, I just kind of looked at it as, uh, more of a positive, you know, you get some, you get experience back you know, you add some new pieces and then hopefully uh, maybe there's some excitement, uh, some good energy with a new staff and, uh, you know, we can go out and do something special here. Can you talk about what it's like having players enter the MLB draft and what's that like as a coach living out their dream? It's exciting. And, you know, it is. It, uh, you know, you, you, you realize that, you know, they they come here and, and it's other places too. I mean, you know, most of them, I mean, I was the same way. When I decided to go to Ole Miss and play Division One baseball, you know, the, the dream is to get an opportunity to, to play, you know, uh, pro uh, or play at the next level. And some of us get it and some of us don't. So, you know, when they get the opportunity, uh, it's special. <clears throat> it's uh it's rare. <laughs> uh, you also know that they become a, uh, a very uh, high percentage in terms of, you know, this is, and when I say high percentage, I guess I should have, I should have flipped this, you know, they become the top in the country, you know, in the nation when they're drafted. So um, it is very fulfilling, um, but you're happy for them. You know, uh, you realize that, you know, these these young men, when they do this, when they choose to come play Division One baseball, uh, it's a way of life. So they're putting a lot into it. They're putting more into it than we ask of them. And when they get that chance to hear their name called uh, and to put on that pro jersey or put that pro name next to them, uh, you know, that that's a that's a lot of work, uh, not only by the individual. Uh, but baseball is a family sport, you know, uh, a lot of uh, moms and dads taking them to practices when they're young. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, the thing I tell them is, you know, celebrate uh, because uh, it is unique and you've earned it. And, um, you know, you just, you just feel the joy that they do. Do you have any players that have entered the MLB draft in your career? I have, um, you know, I've had, uh, I would say a number, um, you know, not only during my time at Pine Bluff, but at Ole Miss. And so I've been fortunate to uh, be a part of that uh, and to be around those players. Um, you know, it's, uh, they're, they get that opportunity because, because they're good, Brandon. And, you know, you, uh, you like to have those guys in your program, you know, because it means you got a chance to probably have a pretty good team as well. Uh, but, you know, what I have found through the years is that, you know, these individuals, these young men, that they, they get that opportunity, they're good people. You know, they're, they're, they're fine young men. They're, they're yes, sir, no, sir, thank you. You know, they, they don't take for granted what's in front of them. Uh, you know, they're guys that you can look back on and say, man, they got the most out of this, which means did they take advantage of it? Yes, because they got the most out of it. And so, uh, yeah, I've been real fortunate to, to have that opportunity. What do you look at in the recruitment process when you're a coach for Charleston Southern? Well, you know, first of all, you're, you're trying to make sure that you've got an individual that you feel can not only, I guess, fit, but make your program better. Uh, and I would say from a cultural standpoint, an attitude standpoint, uh, and then a physicality standpoint, which, you know, you can put the physicality side in terms of ability, um, you know, and then our job is to just make sure that, you know, we vet them that, uh, you know, are we, are we uh, asking questions that assure that, you know, uh, they'll be as good a fit as they can. It doesn't mean that they all work out, you know, just, it doesn't mean that, uh, but you try to. And so, uh, you know, does the personality fit with what we're looking here? Do we feel like, you know, they're a person that can come in and, and provide that, uh, that improvement uh, that, that makes your program uh, better and program meaning everyone. You know, it's the same reason that, you know, I hired the coaching staff that, uh, that was hired because I felt like they would make all of us better. You know, just like our AD when, you know, I had a chance to interview with him and, 
you know, we, we talked about the vision, you know, I was confident that, you know, uh, that he was going to make me a better coach and he already has. And so, um, you know, certainly Brandon, you're looking for talent, uh, but you're looking for individuals that can help elevate you in all aspects. What advice would you give upcoming high school athletes looking to get recruited to the next level? Well, I would say probably my first thing would be is, you know, play as many sports as you can uh, because they all, I think they all benefit you uh, in some way, form or fashion, whether it's the physical um, um, movements that come with it, whether it's the mental skills that are provided, you know, you can sit there and say like football, you know, football creates this, you know, there's this toughness that comes with it. You know, you look at basketball, the sharing of the ball, you know, uh, baseball, there's a lot of individualism with it, but gosh, we need guys to perform so we can get our runs, you know, right. We can get our wins. And so, um, <clears throat> you know, I think, you know, there's uh, a more acceptable uh, per point of view now with, with guys that maybe play sports in the fall, meaning like a football, uh, and that can do baseball as well, you know, and I think that's good. So, uh, you know, it's, Find a place that you love to play, right? Find a place in the summer where uh, you get the opportunity to, to be seen. And what I mean by that is you get an opportunity to get on the field and play. And then, you know, make the decisions that are best for you and your family uh, that allow you the opportunity to, uh, to maybe get looked at by the schools you're interested in. You know, there's a lot of events that take place. It's, you know, it's an expensive sport. So, you know, I have a lot of people ask me, you know, hey, when do, when should we get involved in travel baseball or competitive baseball? And I tell them when you're ready as a family, you know, that, that's when you do it uh, because it's a commitment. And so, uh, you know, I, I uh, and then I am still big on, you know, send us, send videos, you know, I mean, uh, especially this time, you know, we're, we're out there, we're, we're searching Twitter, uh, you know, we're going to take time now to look at video. And then the other thing I would say, Brandon, is uh, go to that particular uh, institution's uh, camps. Uh, I think uh, that's important, you know, because camps give you an extended period of time to be around coaches, right, and to see if, you know, hey, man, do I really like that guy? Yeah, I really do, you know, I enjoyed what he did at camp. I like what they taught. You get to see, uh, you know, the facilities, et cetera. So that would be my advice. What advice would you give upcoming college coaches looking to get into the profession well, uh, you know, I would say, uh, you know, be, you know, be willing to, to start, uh, uh, you know, at the lowest level. And what I mean by that is I'm not talking about necessarily the lowest division, just, just be willing to do the volunteer role, be willing to do the director of ops role. You know, uh, you got to put, uh, you know, take some elbow grease, you got to roll up your sleeves, you know, and uh, again, and I say this with great respect, it just seems like so many of the coaches that we look at today fondly, you know, you, you look at where they started, you know, you look at uh, what they did and you connect the dots to get to where they are today. Um, not all of us, you know, started off as, uh, you know, the assistant, uh, the recruiting coordinator, number one assistant, you know, a lot of us uh, started off in, uh, maybe GA roles, maybe volunteer roles, uh, and just get involved. And then, you know, create uh, this, uh, this line of communication for yourself, you know, go to the go to the ABCA, go to your uh, local state coaches associations, reach out to coaches, uh, you know, email and talk to them. I, mean, I had a young coach out of uh, California that uh, just reached out to me through LinkedIn, and he just wanted to talk. And so, you know, we connected and, um, you know, you find out that, man, this young man, he's, he's doing the, he's doing what he needs to do, but it's not easy. Right. I mean, you know, volunteer coaches aren't on paid salaries, GAs, you know, you hopefully you can get some schooling and, uh, you know, some of your food cover, but, you know, that's just kind of where it starts. And then, you know, be one to uh, be uh, patient and just work hard, smile and, um, you know, let people know that your heart's in the right place and that you have the passion to do it. And, uh, you know, don't be afraid to, 
take that next step, you know, and, and again, look at my situation. You know, I was a, a high school coach and then, you know, went to an NAI as my first head coaching position. And then the next door that opened up was a chance in division two, uh, which led to a chance in division one, which led to a chance to go. Uh, slow the dot. This is as hurdles. You look at them as opportunities. Uh, then maybe you get a chance to, to again. You know, we talked about the players who want the chance to go play MLB, right? Playing the MLB. Uh, you know, you may get a chance to to do what I'm sitting here doing today, and that's and that's be a head coach again. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with Charleston Southern it's baseball? Um, well, we, uh, social media for me, I'm probably most active on Twitter. So it's just, uh, at coach Mac underscore two, three, uh, I've worn uh, the number 23 since, uh, since I was 19 years old. So I just, uh, it's, uh, oh, well, you can see it hanging up in the back there. Right. So, you know, it's, uh, it's important number to me and has significant meaning. And then for uh, Charleston Southern, it would be at CSU Bucks baseball. Thank you again, Coach Mack, for your interview, and best of luck in your endeavors with Charleston Southern in this upcoming year. Brandon, you I appreciate can, it. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Mack, for your interview, and best of luck. My pleasure. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.